Well, Seed Progress <clears throat> is the parent company. There's really multiple companies that run inside of Seed Progress. Our core that we started with was the AutoWatch program. And the AutoWatch program allows a customer who would enter into a participating body shop, they would get an ID card, they'd go back, they would log into the body shop website, enter their ID number, and they can see their car as it progresses through that repair process. And there's a new digital photo every day, there's a message from the advisor, just the delivery date is there, and they can email that, that advisor from that shop if they have any questions or concerns right from the um, from that website so that's kind of like our core that we started with and we built on um, back in 2000 when we first started this um, the other company that we have that's one of our other main cores is called new home watch and we took the same technology carried it right over to the housing industry and we say you can watch your house being built from foundation to finish we say memories are built at home why wait till you move in let's start them right now and so they, they watch that house as it's being constructed and we start right when they start scraping the dirt and we actually have photographers that run out and they they run routes okay um, and they visit that house once a week shoot the photos so that the consumer gets to watch the house under construction saves running out to that building site walking around the building site getting hurt things like that because we're there and, and we have the protective gear we need and everything then we, uh, at the end of the of the home, at closing, uh, the closing gift is a really nice photo album, and okay. it has a high res photo on the front, and then all the photos. I think it's 120 photos. We shoot a lot more than that, but 120 in the photo album, and they get to see digitally wow. photograph all the way through the process, and that sits on their coffee table or wherever, and it's a great marketing tool for the builder, because normally they give a closing gift. Oh, here's a, a, a fruit basket. Right. It rots. Um, here's some flowers that go away. Here's some glasses you put in your cupboard. This sits on the table, and people pick it up, and here's their name, and they go through it, and they get to see that because it's a major event for years, you know. Right. Um, so it's been a really good program. We started that two years ago, and again, that's an offtake of of what we do with the Auto Watch side, um, and that company has really, really done well along with the Auto Watch piece of it. So, and then we started another company called Select Repairs, same type of technology. Um, that one is brand new. We have not really taken that to the marketplace as of yet. And that idea is if you if you took your car for mechanical repairs, right. and they put up on a hoist to do an oil change, and they see your tires are wore out, they would quickly grab a camera, take a picture of the tire, go back to the computer, log into select repairs, upload that into our system, immediately pick the telephone up and call you. Say, wow. hey, bud, uh, while your car was in here, we know some of the things. Go to selectrepairs.com and enter your telephone number. And when you do, there will be a picture of your worn out tires, what it costs to put a new set of tires and what new tires should look like. And we always said it's easily, easy to visually sell over verbally sell. And I right. can verify, this is your car, this is what you need. You see the steel belts sticking through there, and I can usually uh, upsell. And there's a lot, of course, pieces behind it with management pieces behind that also. So. Um, now, and so, so what is the sales proposition to both of those? So I, I'm selling to the repair shop. Why would the repair shop want to put this in? Oh, it's great uh, customer service. Um, okay. And that's, that's the number one reason. Um, a customer comes in, and what's been projected by the news media to the public is that the collision industry is an industry that steals, cheats, and lies. Right. And it's the totally opposite. We, it, it doesn't happen. I mean, what they do is they get their hidden camera, they put it in the car, they drive it to the low-life shop, and they're out there. We take any industry, you're going to find those. Right. Take it down there, and they show it, and they put it on TV because it's good news making, and say, right. see, this is what they're doing to your car. Yeah, that one out of a hundred is doing that. The rest are very legitimate. So, so we, we track click rates, and it's very interesting. You'll see some cars will have zero clicks. Not everybody will look. We know that. Um, but you'll see cars that might have 60 clicks. Okay. And people say, 60? No, they, you, it, it must be wrong. And we say, no, it's at work. And they log in, and while I'm looking at work, my coworkers start logging in, and they start watching the car, too. <laughs> <laughs> and now it becomes a game. We're all watching this car going through the repair process. Right, right. And ideally, we tell the shops, what you really want is the customer to click one time and 12 of their friends to look. Talk to a shop. We say, number one, we're going to increase your customer service index score. Okay. That means more business because you're going to get repeat business. If they're happy, they're going to come back. Right. Um, and then we're going to get that word of mouth, which is more powerful because in a collision industry, a customer only has an accident once every seven years. That's the average. Right. So you may not see the guy again for seven years, but the guys he worked with, May. Like here in the last six months, we've had two major collisions in this facility. Okay. You know? So they go to shops where they, you know, they, they've had good feedback from other people. That's how people choose a body shop. Right. Who did you right. start doing first? Did you start trying to sell to the auto body shops yes. first? Okay. And so then insurance was, you said, we're in the marketplace and you sort of perceived an opportunity. Yeah. 
and when we started it had never been done before. We have a patent on this process. We've got two patents today. Um, but when we started, this, so the first thing I had to do was, first I had to convince a body shop, you need this, okay? Because um, we call the customers, we don't need customers. And customers aren't gonna look. So we had to convince them, first of all, there was, there was a need for this, okay? And I can remember when I first started, shops would walk, we'd, we'd put up a little booth at a trade show, and they'd walk in, they'd literally laugh at us. There is no way that you know, I would ever let a customer watch these repairs and turn around and walk out of the booth. You know, and uh, we don't see that anymore. We've got the acceptance. I also had to, had to get a name for our company and gain a reputation. And I did that by attending conferences. Right. Which I knew nothing about because I fixed cars. And that's all right. I did. Um, so all of a sudden I find myself in conferences and getting involved. And that was huge for us to network with, with that, um, with some of the leaders in the industry. Um, and so we had to build our name, build a reputation. And then, uh, and we did that while we were marketing to the individual body shops early on. We recognized the insurance companies were a huge market for us. We were not ready to go there at all. Um, we had to make our program robust enough, make sure our service, you know, everything was working because they won't accept anything other than it better work. So, right. Um, and uh, it was until really about two and a half years ago that we were really approached by a Nationwide, um, okay. asked us to come and present to them. And uh, I never dreamed that it would be a, a company like a Nationwide, sixth largest carrier in the country, was the first one to jump on board. They tested it and they work with us and so they helped us in a lot of development um, looking at our what we call the insurance back room and some of the tools that we really carried over from the body shop we have what's called a control panel right where a body shop can see all their vehicles and cycle time reports and all kinds of things we took that and we bundled it together and put it into the insurance back room. so there's a when when 25 customers was a milestone for us right and today we're at about 3,000 uh, wow. 20, 25 customers, was a, a milestone. Like, we have 25 customers sending us money. This is great. Uh, we're still running out of our cars with now, laptops. And, now you have 100 times that. Yeah, yeah, well, the insurance company really, I mean, like when I put an insurance company out, when Nationwide came on, they brought in, uh, I think we're at 1,800 shops right now and still growing with them. Uh, insurance brought another 800 into us, and we have a customer base of our own, about four or 500. So and as more insurers are coming in, um, we'll see that they accelerate really quick. We do these rollouts that just, I mean, we pulled on 800 shops with insurance, I think, in three months. Um, well, like I say, I, I went into the collision industry. I was probably one of the few guys that you'll meet in the industry that when I was in high school, I wanted to be a body repair technician. That's okay. what, That was my goal in life. Um, and uh, so I got into an apprenticeship early and became a body technician. But um, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I mean, I've, it's, like I say, it started back when I was... The, the paper boy, and then it moved into, I had a popcorn truck where I sold popcorn, snow cone, cotton candy. Okay. Um, I was doing an apprenticeship all during this time. I started a company um, where we lubricated fleets of trucks around the city of Detroit. We had a very okay. nice business with that. Um, and uh, sold that when my kids started coming along because we worked weekends and nights with that. Didn't like that. And like I said, I was still doing body repair at that time. Started so that was a side. So you were doing these things side, on the side. All yeah. side, yeah. And we started a company called Adlife Communication. was point of purchase sales, which was a, a little electronic device that sense when you were there would give you a message. And it was really cool. Way ahead of our time. Way, way ahead of our time. Did that on the side. I did take a leave of absence for about six months to try to develop that. Um, but I say we were so far ahead of our time and technology wasn't quite there. Um, right. Because the box were pretty big. Um, but other than that, I've been in the collision industry and I've always said I would die a body man i loved it is people think you know oh you got out of it i said no it wasn't getting out of it because i wanted out of it i i totally enjoyed fixing cars and even today when i walk into the shops it's like you know, i was joking with somebody the other day the smell of a paint, good paint fumes man nothing like it you know well, that's um, interesting in a year from now we want to we would like to have three fully deployed top 20 insurance carriers running our program um and that's pretty aggressive because the sales cycle is very long um is that not a watch Yes, that's an auto watch. Okay. With new home watch, of course, uh, in, in a year from now, um, our major task is to deploy the DR Horton program. Okay. Um, that'll be a, that's a year-long process for us and, uh, and balance that all out. And um, with our select repairs, there'll probably be to, to really, within a year, we maybe start to see us really launch that program. The other two companies are growing so fast that um, it's hard to put any resources and time into that. It's fully right. developed, ready to go. It's just got to be put into the marketplace. So, right. um, But, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of our plans.